In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We're going to be looking at the second uh, episode on uh, Luke 23, uh, verses 13 to 25, the story of Barabbas and the Lord standing there as he saves Barabbas um, and is chosen to be crucified uh, instead of Barabbas. And today's episode is just... Uh, it's just a question actually the question is is where where were the the 5,000 that he fed that day when the whole multitude cried out crucify him where were the 5,000 he fed where were the the where was the crowd that had wanted him to be king where was uh, where were the the ten lepers that he healed or the two men the blind men that he gave sight to where was the samaritan woman where was uh, all the the sick that he healed where were the the people who were demon possessed that he set free where were the tax collectors that had dinner at levi's house with him where were they where were they when when the whole crowd was crying out for this beautiful, innocent, pure God-man to be crushed and crucified by the Romans? Where were the people who, who asked to be his disciples? Where was the, the crowd that praised him and, and praised uh, uh, his mother and his, and his siblings for being in his family? Where were all those people he had seen or all the people that he had blessed, healed, walked with, taught day and night? Jerusalem was packed with the people of all of Israel of that, at that time because it was the feast and all of Israel would come together in Jerusalem. Where were all those people? How did he stand there completely silent, knowing the hearts and minds of the people who were yelling, crucify him, who were yelling death, where once the word of God spoken gave life, here the words of humans proclaimed and called out for death, for condemnation. It, it, it's such an incredible paradox, such an incredible, uh, it's, it's, so, it's so baffling to see uh, the God-man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, creator of heaven and earth, standing there being condemned to death by his very creation. And where, where were all those that he had touched or blessed, healed? sanctified called out taught and 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 where were they and the answer is it doesn't matter because in reality uh, when we are faithless when we abandon him he remains faithful he remains faithful to his love towards us he remains faithful to those who would betray him and have betrayed him and have denied him and have run away and the irony in all of this is that as he is standing there remaining completely faithful to his love for humanity many of the people who ran away felt that he had failed them in his weakness in his humility and his not fighting back and his refusing to perform miracles that would set him free or performing or, or refusing to call fire from heaven to put all these heathens down or his refusal to fight back or to answer back was to many who ran away a sense of his failure a sense of his inability to be whom they wanted him to be. His humility, his meekness to people 
was a failure at him being the Messiah, the sovereign who would, you know, you know, who would save them from the Romans. And yet, while all those who had abandoned him and were faithless and felt that he had abandoned them, he remained faithful, but he remained faithful to love. He remained faithful and obedient to the Father, even to the point of death. He was led to the slaughter as a lamb, silent and meek and innocent. And so in our everyday life, sometimes we feel that he has abandoned us, that he is silent in the face of our suffering. We must remember that if anyone is going to be faithless, it's not him, it is us. May today we remember the way of the humble, meek, uh, crucified Lord who remained faithful and obedient unto death. And let us not run away from him. Let us remember all the good that he has done to us. And let us stand in solidarity with him. Let us take up our crosses and stand with him. Have a beautiful day.